Hello and welcome to Old Whalers Church in Sag Harbor and Springs Community Church in East Hampton. Glad that you are here to worship God. Majestic are your works. In wisdom, God created the world. The earth is full of God's creatures. May the glory of the Lord endure throughout the earth. Let us sing along with the birds of the air and the creatures of the sea. Let us worship with the deer in the forest and the trees of the field. Let us worship our God of all creation. Let us sing praises to our Creator. Let us pray. Holy One, you called us into being out of your love for all of creation. You create in us a new life and give us new hearts for seeking your ways of justice, peace, and reconciliation. Even though we still sin, loving God, you give us the opportunity to journey again with you. You forgive us and renew us. In all of creation, we see signs of your promise of new life. Help us to turn away from the ways of the world ways we have created to get ahead, to have more, to do more for ourselves. And instead, remember that you created us in your image to be caretakers of the earth and to be your children, your family. Help us to seek reconciliation with those who are estranged from, forgiveness from those who we have hurt, and justice for those we have failed to speak out for. In the name of Christ, who gives us the promise of new life, through his life, death, and resurrection, we pray. Amen. Hi. Good morning, church family. This is Sean Mitchell, your on-location Sunday school teacher. And I've brought you to my garden today. I have some mint and some cucumbers and tomatoes and corn, and some flowers, some sunflowers, and you may be noticing something. Although things are growing all around me, so are the weeds. So many weeds, and it's hard to keep up with them. I feel every week that I am coming into my garden and I am pulling those weeds and saying to myself, why are the weeds growing so fast and everything else is taking its dear sweet time? Well, Pastor Linda is going to be sharing another story from the book of Matthew, which is about Jesus and planting seeds and the areas that he planted seeds that did really well and then some areas that did not so well. So I want you to take a guess of why do the weeds in my garden grow so well? 
Do you think that my soil is really rocky with lots of stones and no sun, no water? Or perhaps I have really good soil and I water my garden all the time and it's indirect sunlight. Well, if you were thinking that, you are correct because as I've learned, I am not the best green thumb, another word for a really good gardener. I'm trying to learn, but from everything that I have read and practiced is that everything needs a good soil and it needs sunlight and water. So I've done my best to create a space that has wonderful soil and I always water it every day in the hopes that things will grow. Well, Jesus had said to his disciples that I am planting seeds for you. And I want you to think about this being the words that Pastor Linda and that Jesus plants in our heart. And our heart is going to determine how good those seeds are going to grow, how good those words are going to be believed and followed and backed up by faith. So, do you have a rocky heart, a dehydrated heart, or is your heart like my garden with really good soil and water and sunlight where whatever is planted there, whatever you learn about Jesus, will grow strong and full of faith to share with others. Now, along the way, there's going to be weeds. There's going to be things that you are going to have to pull out or to sort through. Just like in your heart, sometimes things are not easy. Sometimes you have to make decisions of what belongs in your heart and what doesn't. And those decisions are really hard. But that's why we have to build a garden and a heart filled with beautiful things to help guide us with those really hard decisions. Now, I will have no trouble coming in and weeding these things. I know which ones are the plants with the tomatoes and I know which ones are the weeds that I don't want. Sometimes in our hearts, we don't know what is the good, what is the bad, what should we keep, what should we let stay. It's not so clear cut like in my garden with all these weeds. But through our learning together and you learning all the stories in the Bible, you will learn what is best to help you grow, to help your heart grow with Jesus's word, and to know when sometimes you just need to weed that garden and some things get overgrown and maybe a lot of hard work, but with hard work comes good things. So after I have done my best to prep this garden, there's no weeds when I started, and I chose the seeds, and I determined what soil I wanted, not too rocky, not too much water, not too much sun. I wanted it just right so that everything would grow its best. And even though you do everything just right all the time, sometimes you'll get weeds and more work. And my future does hold more work, but that's okay because I know when I put that hard work in, out of it, the result will be, look at these tomatoes. See that? Even though it's surrounded by weeds and overgrowth, there are some beautiful tomatoes on their way for me to share with my family. So think about if you have gardens at home or if you like to plant things, or just in your everyday life? Do you want your heart and your garden to feel, be filled with rockiness and weeds and dry and no sunlight? Or do you want your garden to be filled with beautiful growth of plants from sunshine and water and a little bit of hard work? I think that's what I want my heart to be because with hard work comes beautiful things. So go out there today and if you haven't planted something special to grow, 
do it now. And I hope all of you are well, and I will be seeing you soon, I hope. Have a great day. Bye.
you've probably heard it interpreted in several different ways. For parables are rich in meaning. Jesus told parables so that we could continue to get meaning out of them and understand what they meant for our lives and how we live out our lives as Christians. So what does the parable of the sower have to say to us today? Perhaps you've heard it interpreted as we need to be good soil. We need to be the soil that receives the word and understands it, that we need to be the, the soil where the word grows and we live out our Christian life. And then you've heard stories of the other soil and people who are not the good soil and the word doesn't grow and the word falls away and they continue the life that they were leading looking at the world's values. But perhaps today we can look at the parable of the sower from the perspective of the sower, not necessarily the seed or the soil. Who is the sower and what does the sower do? We know from this parable that the sower sows seeds very differently than a farmer would sow seeds today. That the grounds that Jesus was looking at was very different. It was very rocky and it was very dry and it was hard to grow good things there. And farmers, rather than having the modern technology that we have, would just scatter seed and hope that some of it grew. So the sower, if the sower is God, the sower broadcasts the seed widely. It doesn't matter if the seed falls on thorny ground. It doesn't matter if the seed falls on the path. It doesn't matter where the seed falls. The point of the story is that the seed is scattered. And what is that seed? The seed is the love and mercy and grace of God. The seed is the word of God. And the seed gets scattered broadly. So if we see the sower as God, God abundantly shares God's love with everyone and in every place. Think about that. God isn't just spreading God's love to those who want to hear it, or to those who live in a particular place, or to those who are of a particular status, or to those who are good people. No, God spreads the word to everyone. The seed is scattered everywhere. God's love is available to everyone. But perhaps instead of God as the sower, we look at ourselves as the sower. We're the ones who spread God's love. Now, I've been involved in church growth and learning how to grow churches and spread God's word and spread the gospel for most of my ministry. I've been to a million workshops on how to grow the church. None of them have the key to the answer, but all have good ideas. So how do we spread the word as sowers? If we go to a church growth conference, it means that we go out and we look at the demographics of our community. Who lives there? What do they do? What do they need? Where are they going? What's important to them? And then take the gospel message and share it in a real way so that they can see that we are sharing the love of God. So in some places, that might be bringing food to people who are hungry. In other places, it might be starting a youth group for their children. It depends on what the demographics are, and we attempt to be good business people, appealing to those who are around us. But how does it really work, this sowing God's word, if we look at the scripture, it means we're supposed to sow it abundantly, not, not being so particular about who we talk to or when we talk to them or where we talk to them, but that we just spread God's word abundantly. How many of us do that? And then what results do we expect? Do we expect a hundredfold or sixtyfold or thirtyfold? And should we expect that there be a result every time? I have to tell you,
you about my friend Laura. Laura lives in Union, Missouri, and Laura's son Michael and my daughter Kara became best friends in third grade when we first moved to Union. And so Kara and Michael wanted to play together, so I would take Kara over to Michael's house to play, and I got to know his mom, Laura. And Laura and I would talk, and she asked me what I did, and of course I told her I was the pastor of the Presbyterian Church in town. And then I would tell her what we were doing, and I found out that they didn't go to church. She grew up in a Methodist church, but they haven't gone since the kids were born, and she really didn't seem to have much interest. But I still kept talking to her about what the church was doing and how we were reaching out to people and about ways she might be able to join in or be a part of our church. We talked about all kinds of other things too, but that was one of our conversations. And I talked to her for five years about the church. And after about five years, she said to me one day, we're going to a Baptist church. And I said, a Baptist church? How could you do that after I spent five years talking to you about the Presbyterian church? No, I didn't really say that, but I was really disappointed. Not soon after, not too far after that, we were talking again about church, and she was talking about the church that they were attending, and then they stopped attending that church, and she said, I'm not a Baptist, so let's try the Presbyterian church. So they started coming to the Presbyterian church. Now Laura and her family are active members. Both her and her husband have been elders. Laura's the treasurer of the church. She was the main cook of our um, Tuesday night meal program. We don't know when the seed, where the seed is going to land. And when it lands, you don't know when it's going to sprout. But the good news and the message of this parable is that we keep sowing the word, that we sow it wherever we can, to whoever we can, we never know who's listening and when it might take root and when it might bear fruit. Are you a sower? Do you sow the good news of Jesus Christ and how Jesus has sh shaped your life and made your life better? The good news today is that we have an opportunity to share those stories wherever we go, in a way that people will hear and people will listen. We won't be successful all the time, and it might take five years or more, but we're called to share the good news, to scatter the seed, even in the foreground, even in the thorn, even on the path, even where the birds will eat it. But the message is, we're called to share, and share abundantly. Amen.
gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for your word. For your word informs our lives and helps us to live as your children. Help us to continue to grow in our understanding of what you're telling us to do and how you're telling us to live. Help us to be good soil, O God, where your word grows and flourishes, and we see the fruit of your word in our lives. O God, we give you thanks for the gift of your word and the opportunity we have to pray. That you hear our concerns, that you hear our joys, that you hear what is happening in our lives and in the life of this congregation. We pray for the church here and throughout the world as we go through major changes in how we do church and what's important. Help us to continue to scatter the seed broadly so that all might hear the word and have the opportunity to grow. We pray, O oh God, that you continue to bless the church. As we pray, O oh God, we pray for our concerns. We live in a world where there is much division and anger. We pray, O oh God, that there might be a place and a time where we can sit and listen and talk to one another and begin to make changes in our world, begin to really hear what the pain is about, begin to hear what the concerns are, and make changes so that all people feel like they have a place in this world. We live in a world, oh God, that's plagued by this disease, and it's been going on for some time now, and everyone's getting tired of talking about COVID and talking about masking and talking about what the future might be. We are very uncertain, O oh God, about what the future holds. And we are making decisions about when to meet and how to meet and where to meet and what to do in the future. Help us, O oh God, and guide us into that future into that new way of being and new way of doing things. Help us, O oh God, as a church and as a community and as a nation to figure out how we can move into the future safely. O oh God, as we pray together, we pray for those who are ill, that they might know your healing hand. We pray for those who are grieving, that they too might know your promises of everlasting life. We pray for those who do not have enough food or clothing or shelter, that they might have the necessities of life. As we pray for our concerns, we also lift up the joys of our lives, the joy that we have of seeing one another in worship again, the joy of bright summer Sunday days, the joys of children laughing. O oh God, our lives are richly blessed, and we give you thanks, O oh God, for each of your blessings in our lives. Each one of us has joys and has concerns. Hear the prayers of our hearts as we lift them up to you in silence.
field and scatter the seeds of God's word. And may the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.